very useful and will save you a ton of time. Every minute that you watch of this video tutorial, which probably is not going to be longer than 10 minutes, will save you hours and hours when coding. So make sure you watch throughout the whole video and actually understand a lot of the things that I'm showing here because I guarantee you, um, you will thank yourself later for watching this video. Okay, so let's get started with it. I'm going to assume that you guys uh, have no idea how to use PyCharm. We're going to start directly from the basics. If you're someone who already knows how to use PyCharm, you know how to add configuration, set up a project, go ahead and skip to the next video in this series. But if you're not, then follow along. So if you've already opened up PyCharm, you're going to have something that looks like this. Um, you've probably created a project or you might um, have opened an existing project. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to close this project by going File, Close Project. And now we're going to be at a window that looks like this. And this might be something that it looks like for you if you haven't done anything yet with PyCharm. On the left hand side here, you're going to have your most recent projects that you can open really quickly just by clicking on them. And then you can create new projects or open new projects. In this case, I'm going to open a new project. And a new project is pretty much any folder that contains any files in it. So like a text file or a Python file. So I'm just going to go to desktop, go to Python. YouTube and then I already have a project I've set up here. It's called PyCharm debug. So you can see I can open this. I could open the individual file, but I'm just going to open this entire folder because this represents a project. Okay, so I've done this and you can see that I have my files on my left hand side here. Now these files, you can open them uh, multiple tabs. So you can see I have debug, I have Dell. If I want to create a new file um, in here, so then I can right click and click new. Python file, uh, regular file, which I could add like a text file or something like that. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of how you open this up. Now, before I even start writing any code, I want to show you how you would run code. So let's say you opened up one of your existing Python projects and you want to run your code. You're going to notice up here, I'm going to just going to get rid of this right now so that we can do it from fresh. It's going to say add configuration. And this is because you need to add a configuration and a Python interpreter before you can run all of your files. So what's great about PyCharm is you can add multiple configurations and you can run different files by simply selecting the configuration up here. So let's go up here and click add configuration. We're going to click this plus icon. We're going to click Python and then we're going to give it a name. So in this case, I want to be running my Dell file. So I'm going to name it Dell so that I know which configuration it is. I need to now select the script path. I'm going to click this little folder and find my Dell file. Uh, it should default you to your project folder. So it should be fast to find. Click OK. And then I need to go to Python interpreter and select one. Now you uh, may or may not already have a Python interpreter. If you don't, don't worry, I'm going to show that in just one second. Um, but in this case, I have multiple, I'm going to select Python 3.7. And this is useful as well as you can run different interpreters on the same project. Okay, so now I have that. And if I wanted to run the file, I could just click this little run icon. Now, if you don't already have a Python interpreter, it's very easy to set up. All you have to do is click on file, go to settings, and then go to uh, build execution development, you're going to go to actually, I believe it's here, sorry, project PyCharm debug, you're going to go to project interpreter, and then you're going to select one up here. So if you already have um, Python installed, one of them should show up like Python 3.7. Um, and I'm going to do that here. If for some reason that's not showing up for you, you're going to click on settings, click add, and then you're just going to go to uh, what do you call it system interpreter and the find the basic Python interpreter and click OK. I'm not going to do that because I already have one set up, um, but that's how you add a Python interpreter to your project. Okay, so I'm going to apply that, click OK, and we're ready to go. So now I'm going to get into um, just coding a little bit and showing you some of the things that Python or PyCharm can help you out with and save you a lot of time. The first thing is autofill. So you can see I start typing here, and already it's um, showing up what it thinks I want to type. So if I want to do this, I can simply click Enter or I can click Tab. So now I'm going to say import and then I want Pygame. So I'm going to use the down arrow key and hit tab. And you can see that that automatically fills up here. Now notice already it's giving me some little squiggly lines and it's graying out my text. And it's just letting me know that I'm not using this import statement. So if I start using it, so I say pygame.init, you can see that now this goes away because it is a used import statement. Um, this already shows you some of the power of PyCharm. It's extremely, uh, I want to say, intelligent and it'll keep giving you recommendations and it knows when you're changing things and doing things wrong. So you can see I'm getting another um, error here, or a little like recommendation that's saying no new line and file. So if I click enter, then you can see it gets rid of that. It just because it wants a new line at the end of each file. 
Okay, so another really cool thing in PyCharm in terms of coding, and this is basic, I've already shown it in one of my other videos, but I'm just gonna create a variable called x, and I'm just gonna print x like a bunch of times to the screen here, okay? Okay, so this will work fine. It's gonna print seven, um, what do you call it, three times, but what if I wanna change this variable name to something like um, p? Okay, so if I wanna change this to p, now if I wanna ch change all of these variables here that used to be called um, X, sorry, because this used to be called X, and I want to still be printing the same value seven, I'd have to change all of these manually and go P, 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 like that. Okay, now it's not that bad for only three instances of the variable, but what if you had this P showing up or the X originally a hundred times in your program? Well, that would take you a long time to change all of those variable names. So, a really cool thing that PyCharm has is it's called refactoring. So, if you highlight your variable, you right click on it, you click refactor and then rename, you can change it to whatever you want. So, in this case, I'm just going to change it to test. I'm going to click refactor and you can see that it changes all of the instances of that variable um, to the current name. And this works within a scope too. So, if I do something like define main and then I just do test equals zero. And then same thing here, I'll print test. And I decide that I wanna now change this and I click this and I click, what do you call it? Refactor, rename, and then what do you call it? Let's go like, hello. You can see that it now changes it over here. So this did it a bit differently just cause test already exists, but you can see that it's only changing within the scope. It didn't change any of the tests up here like that, okay? So now um, let's show another, some other cool things. So PyCharm has a ton of different commands. If you go just to view, navigate code and just scroll through them, you can see uh, a ton of things it can do. Move statement up, move statement down, move line down, move line up. There's tons of different things, but I'm gonna show you a few keyboard shortcuts that should save you a lot of time. So the first one is just simply find. Now this one you could probably guess, it's control F. And if you do this, it brings up a little window here and you can search for things in your program. So say I wanna find test, you can see that it shows me test here and then you can go to the next occurrence of test and keep moving throughout. It's not gonna search within the scope, um, or actually it will, but it's just cause it's not named test anymore. So if I search for hello, you can see it shows me this here and same thing, we can move down, move up, um, edit them, change them and so on. So another cool keyboard shortcut um, is to see recent changes that you've done in your file. Now you might not find this useful for small files, but if you're working on large files or with multiple people, um, to see the changes is really useful. So if you click Alt, Shift, and then F, or not F, sorry, C, it'll actually pop up um, all the different changes that you made. You can see I made an external change 29 minutes ago, created Python script debug, um, deleting, creating Python script del, and it'll show you all the things you've done um, in terms of like files and changes to the actual project, which can be useful. Um, yeah. Okay, so now another keyboard shortcut, and this one is useful as well, especially if you're um, gonna be doing the same thing multiple times, so maybe just changing a variable name, and it's control D. You can see when I press this, it duplicates the line that my cursor's on. So if I go on hello and I click control D, you can see now I've duplicated hello, um, and that's really useful as well. And by the way, all of these things you can do without the keyboard shortcuts, um, these just save you a bunch of time. So you can see like if I highlight this, I go code, and then I believe there's something that says duplicate line. Um, it was somewhere, but anyways, there's ways to do it from just looking at, uh, the things up here so navigate yeah anyways forget about that but there's ways that you can do that without using the keyboard shortcut in case you guys forget okay so another useful thing that pycharm has is this little to-do list and this is useful if you're working on a large project or you're working on something and you're not sure when you're going to come back to it um and like are you at the end of a session and you want to remember what to do next so if i make a comment just by simply using the pound key here and then i write to do and then I can fill this with whatever I want. So I'm going to say to do finish, uh, oops, finish this function like this. Okay. I'm going to add another to do up here. I'm going to say import other modules. I need to start this with to do. And you can see whenever I put to do um, in lowercase or capitals as well, it's going to turn this comment into like a little green comment here. And you can see that if I'm in the to do tab down here, it shows to um, to do items so it'll show me exactly where in my file and what line uh, where the comment exists and then if i click on it it'll bring me to it so it's not working so you can see that it, it was it scrolled down when i went to main to show me this comment and this is a good way to remember what you have to do and it's useful because you can put these right on um, where you need to change something or do something new 
Uh, again, you might not find this useful if you're only using small, uh, what do you call it? Small files and small projects, but on large projects, this is something you really need to uh, keep track of. And it's really useful when you can comment it directly in the code. Okay, so another one that I want to show you guys, um, and this one might not seem as important, but it's kind of a w cool selection tool that you can use. And some of you might find it useful, so I figured I'd show you. So if you hold down the Alt key, and you start selecting something, and then you move up or down, you can see it selects um, only the column that you're working in. So this is holding down the Alt key, and I'm just pressing the uh, left click on my mouse and just scrolling around. You can see it just selects the current column that I'm working with. Again, I don't know why you would find that useful, but in case any of you have a certain use for it, I'd figured I'd show it to you. Okay, so another thing that we can do as well is this thing called surround with. So if I type something like, um, say, run equals true, and then I'm just going to type run, I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to hit the keys, control, alt, and T. So control, alt, T. And you can see that it pops up this thing called surround with, and I can do if, while, try, accept, try, finally, if expression, while expression, if expression is none. And it just automatically creates all of these different things. And if I click, for example, three, then it automatically will surround my variable with the uh, expression that I selected. And this is useful if you want to do things quickly and you remember the keybinds. Um, and if you get used to it, it'll save you a bunch of time in terms of having to type out all these expressions and worrying about like indentation and stuff like that. Now there's obviously like a million other commands and things that you can do within PyCharm and I'm going to cover them in future videos, but I just wanted to show you guys a quick overview of some of the basic things you can do and show you the power of PyCharm. I recommend that you continue watching the rest of the series um, because in the next video I'm going to go over debugging and this video I guarantee you will save you a ton of time and a ton of headache when you're working with code and running code because PyCharm has a really useful and super powerful debug um, thing and I'm going to go through exactly how that works. Anyways, that's been it for this first video. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more showing you more things you can do with PyCharm. This was just a general overview. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.